Hello and welcome to my channel. Even though this sounds contradictory, I'm cautioning you not to get into flashlights. <laughs> not to get into them the way I do. Um, it's, it's become just like knives. It's, it's an addiction. You look at this and you say, well, that flashlight looks just like that flashlight. No, no, they're, they're different. I mean, besides the color, uh, this one's rechargeable. Well, well what makes it rechargeable? Uh, nothing, just a different battery and, and circuitry inside it. It is a different flashlight, slightly. How different was it? Enough for me to buy it, you know? That's an addiction right there. You can just get it because it's a new one coming out. Uh, I have an i3T hiding somewhere. It's just basically a single AA flashlight instead of a double. This is a double. It's called the i3T+. Plus. comes in nice, pretty colors. In this case, I have two identical. They're exactly the same thing. Um, but... One's a different color, but uh, in, internally they're the same thing. Same emitter, same everything. This is the one I've been using for the longest time. It's SR2 Baton 2. They'll confuse you with their the nomenclature, because if you look at this one, and you see this one is a Baton 3, the one that I've got coming in is a Baton 3 Pro, but it's... It's not really this guy enlarged. It's really this guy modified. Um, and they they give out freebies often. You know they do their they do their sales, and every time they do their sales, they usually have a free knife. I mean a free light. Usually, if you bought something before, you don't even have to buy anything at that time to get the free gift. You just pay for shipping. So a lot of these lights right here are free so that that's how you acquire a lot of that but it it's the shiny stuff it's the innovation you know the thing i you can you can complain about olight all you want i know there are there are olight haters out there and everything else my thought is that um yeah they have problems like when they introduced the baton 3 pro when it first came out they had uh, a proximity sensor that, uh, in theory, the proximity sensor is supposed to prevent you from putting this light on turbo. Oh, sorry, I got to do turbo. Putting it on the hottest, you can feel the heat right there. If that's on and that's in your pocket, ow, that's going to burn you. Or if it's set down here, it's going to burn. And with no proximity sensor, you don't know that light's on. You don't, you don't get a lot of spill with it. One one thing to avoid, one way to avoid that would have been to make something clear around the bezel here every so often. So that if you did set it down, it might still shine the light off. I don't know how many of them were from setting it down on the face or just turning on accidentally in the pocket. <clears throat> they have a, a an automatic shutoff feature, which is if you hold it down continuously, it'll go into moonlight mode and then it'll blink at you. I don't know if you saw that, but when you go to press the button, you'll just get a red flash. See that? I yeah, I got the light in the camera. You'll just get a red flash and the light won't come on. To turn it on, you hold it, and then it'll go back into moonlight mode, and then you can cycle through. It is kind of a pain in the butt, because if you wanted to lock it out, but you want the light to turn with it just coming on automatically and coming on with a, a really usable light, the only way this one's going to work in lockout mode is when you turn it on, it's going to come into moonlight mode. Now, yeah, you can, you can cycle through the. Let's see, we're, we're in lockout. You hold it down, and you're coming in moonlight. As long as your butt, your fingers held down on that button, you're you're in moonlight. You have to pull your finger off, and push it again, and then cycle through. It's it's no big deal. It's a matter of seconds and stuff. But I, I mean. <clears throat> That's just one of the annoying features of um, trying to prevent. Nothing can be made perfectly safe. 
uh, they're trying to make things safe, but um, if you're having an issue with that, then this button might be, you know, part of the cause. So with the new one that's coming in, I don't have it yet, but they're, they're going to be sending it because I bought, you know, a Baton 3 Pro. Instead of this button being small and raised up like that, it's down and wider. So it's harder to hit from the side and momentarily turn on. What are they doing? They're improving. I mean, they're, they're coming in. They're trying new stuff. And with the new proximity sensor, the problem with it is that at a certain distance, the light would automatically dim. And how is it doing that? Well, it has to be something optically, the reflection back into the lens. And though that could mean all it could take is one bird dropping or... Uh, fog or anything else like this to give it an uneven reflection something i don't know what all's going on but something's wrong with the sensor and so they recall the product but they did, they also offered a replacement and usually they'll give a person a free light you know as appreciation for their you know their their screw up so they're trying to improve the product. Now the Baton 3 Pro comes with the proximity sensor disabled. Does that bother me? No. Um, because I've never had a problem with these turning on. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen or it can't happen. I've never had a problem with that. I've never had a problem with this one either, turning it on like that. Because I don't set my lights down, bezel down. I'll set it up like this if I'm going to set a light down. It's just a matter of you can overcome what these what these things are trying to overcome um, through technology by just using different practices. You know, like if the light's coming, it's annoying. But if the light seems to be coming on when it's going to put it in lockout mode. Yeah, you know, if you don't like that, then get a tail switch operated one. You know, give up on that particular design and get one that operates by a tail switch. Now, one guy, one guy was saying that... He didn't like uh, the i3 or the i3T Plus or the i5. I don't remember which one it was because he said this butt that would come on in his pocket. This button. Man, I estimated it and then I actually measured it. I, I went ahead and I got on a scale and I put it in pounds and I just started pushing down. And I read what the reading was when it came on momentarily and I read what it did to click the switch to come on momentarily it took two and a half pounds of direct pressure on that switch to turn it on completely to low mode it comes on at four pounds of pressure you have to have four pounds directly pushing on this thing to get it to click now if this is in your body and up to next to you i i just don't see how this thing could go into high mode and with these other ones, they don't get super hot. The i3T and the i5R Plus, they don't they don't get as hot. I can sit there, you know, do this. It's not going to burn me all day long. You can see the veins. Look at that. The veins. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's an addiction. It's just like uh, Nick Shabazz says, don't get into watches, you know, because... I'm not saying don't have a flashlight. It's just don't get carried. Try not to get carried away with them. This is par partially a video for you and partially a video for myself. You know, it's like saying, stop this. Because during their Black Friday sale, because I couldn't find my i3T, you know, I went ahead and I, and I ordered another one. Yeah, the i3T is going to appear sooner or later but i got it on sale for like 13 dollars, and they're normally 20 dollars. i like the single one i like the double ones too but i miss having a just a single double a because i carry this i mean triple a because i carry this one all the time it's pretty good i like it it provides enough light yeah they got proprietary batteries but you can drop anything in this thing and it'll run it may not run properly but it'll run it won't burn it up um I like the magnetic charging bases. Some people don't like that. Now, the only issue I have with that, I don't know if you can see it on this one, is uh, these are super strong magnets. See those filings right there? Those are metal filings. 
they're hard. Try getting them off. They don't want to come off. And I don't want to demagnetize the magnet. Well, the problem with this also is this is your charging connection. So I found like with that uh, Olight Baton 3, you know, this one came with the little uh, charging case and everything. That one time I had a little piece of wire wheel metal between this contact right here. And when I put it in the charging thing, the light flashed red and it wouldn't charge. And I was like, what the hell? And so now, before I drop them in the charging case, I just routinely just go like this with my hand. Because who knows what your metal, your magnet's going to pick up. But, that's what I miss about a tail switch one, is because it doesn't have the magnet. And I like the magnet. The magnet ability to just stick it, stick your knife in a tree, and there's your, your spotlight, you know. Or if you're working on a car or something else, you just stick it in there. Or electrical panel, anything. Anything metal, boom refrigerator in your in your house if the kitchen lights go out or whatever you can prepare everything by just sticking on the side of the refrigerator you cook your meal everything i know because i've done this and then there's just the silly things you know which are which seem like kind of silly but these these turn out to be fairly useful these old bulbs i mean besides just like sitting there and doing different colors and stuff um when you're walking around you can put it like this on your back so you don't as easily get run over. Not necessarily. That's not necessarily going to save your butt because some people might just aim for it. You know, <laughs> this world nowadays. But you should be. That would signal, hey, watch out. There's a pedestrian. Don't run over them. Who knows what it is nowadays, all right? <clears throat> so that thing's flashing red, by the way. It doesn't look white at all except for when it's off. It's just this camera color rendition. I don't know what's wrong with it. <clears throat> but yeah. And then it's the bright colors. You can get addicted to just like we do with knives, you know, with the scales. Oh, I like this color. I like that color. It's still basically a flashlight. As long as you've got a flashlight that works, I don't care who makes it and it and it works for you. Um it can be a pleasant addiction. You know, I've always enjoyed flashlights. I've always, I've had mag lights. I've had stream lights. You know, here's a stream light that I carry. I find very useful because it goes, if you want bright light immediately, this one, because it's in brown, will go directly. It's a tactical. It'll go to the brightest one. A lot of times when you need a light, you don't want to have to go starting off with the low mode. Now, these other ones, the more advanced ones, can you know, remember the setting and, and remain at a higher mode and everything. But still, it can get complicated. And it can get into his fanboy situations too. You know, I've seen people where they sit there and uh, they bought an Olight or they have an Olight and somebody gets in there and just like the knife community, man. Cheap Chinese crap. Cheap Chinese junk. You know. Oh, my God. I mean, it happens everywhere. It's not exclusive. It's not just in the knife community. I'm sure it's in a, any other community where people collect things that used to be made in their country or other countries, and now it's all made in China. So you're going you're gonna to run into that. And you'll have people trying to defend, you know, the company and everything else. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> it is. It is another one of those things that uh, I would caution against getting carried away with them any of these would be perfectly fine for me to have all day a lot of i have other ones on keychains too you know any of these are perfectly fine i like having a light with me because i've i think i was born at night my uh sleeping schedule seems to be night shift if i go by a biological clock not by what the daylight and everything says and uh yeah, uh, I'm. I always like lights because also if you have a problem with vision in a low light situation, it's harder to make out things. But if you've got any amount of light, you've got contrast, you'll be able to resolve. Oh, you know that's where my glasses went, <laughs> or uh, oh that's where that knife went when I dropped it. Instead of going down there and picking everything up and digging around you just shine a flashlight and you find exactly where whatever you were using that you dropped you can find you can't do that unless you have a light 
unless you have a flashlight. Of course, yeah, if you've got young eyes, you have no problems. And, you know, got young eyes, then you don't need to be listening to me. These are old eyes talking to you. But anyway, there you go. I enjoy them. I enjoy my addiction. I, I, I basically face up to it. I realize I have no power over it. I'm, I try to control it. Every time I purchase one, I feel kind of bad in a way, you know, to myself. Not that it, that it costs me a lot of money. It's just like I go through this again. You probably go through this sometimes when you're buying a knife. If you, if you buy knives, it's, why am I doing this? Do I really need it? The answer is usually no. It's usually you want it. And, and don't dismiss it just because um, you want it outweighs uh, needing. Needing is always, you know, don't, don't let things get in the way. Don't let your addiction get in the way of the essentials. Always cover your housing and your food and, you know, your electricity, your essentials and stuff like that. But once you've got that covered, your expendable income is up to you, in my opinion. And whatever you get, if it makes you happy... Getting a zombie blood splattered uh, green knife. If that if that makes you happy, which and to me I, I just find this hilarious. You know, I, this is this is great and useful. <laughs> so if that makes you happy, that was money well spent. All those other things that you had to spend, you're, yeah, you're happy to have a home. You're happy to have electricity, but was it? fun paying that much of your money into it no if you had a choice and you could live the same for less money you'd do it but a lot of times we don't have a choice here so in this situation if you if you want to watch out for addictions or or, or hobbies that can get carried away one of them is flashlights you probably already know about knives because this is the knife channel one of them can be knives, another can be flashlight, other ones can be pew pews. I've gone down all these paths before. <laughs> and all the accessories that go with all these different things. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to consume as a human if you have the money to consume. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry I'm, I'm rambling on. So even Peppy fell over. So, there you go. What's my favorite flashlight well it's it keeps changing like i said i carry i carry the i5r i like it a lot i carry too many flashlights on me i'm usually carrying that one i'm usually carrying a baton three i'm usually carrying the streamlight also on me every pocket i reach into usually has a flashlight and i'm up during the day most of the time and I have this glow-in-the-dark tape on it, too, in case I drop it and my eyes can see in the dark where my flashlight is. There you go. This has kind of been a ramble. No knives are involved, and no dinosaurs were hurt in the making of this video. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.